Yeah, so thank you, Stephanie, and then uh, thank you, Dr. Nally, for joining us. Um, essentially, the purpose of the webinar that we're hosting today is just to talk um, with people that might have some questions around the trainee awards program that Census Canada and MyTax have put together. Um, essentially, what we wanted to talk about a bit more in depth during today's webinar was the MyTax Accelerate program. I think that there's a lot of questions around how to find partnerships, um, who's eligible for, as a partner, et cetera. So those were some of the topics that we were hoping to cover today. Um, but given that we do have like a smaller group with us, I think that uh, we'll also give you both the opportunity to tell us, you know, why it was that you joined today. And then maybe we can have a bit more of a targeted um, Q&A where we just kind of present you guys the information that's most relevant rather than take up the full 90 minutes as we had planned. Um, so with that, I, I think we'll just start with introductions from Ryan and I, and then um, we'll get you both to introduce yourselves um, and just kind of hear from you both, like what it is that you were here uh, to learn today. So in terms of introductions, um, I do know Stephanie uh, quite well. And then I've also emailed with um, Dr. Nali. So um, I'm the uh, managing director of Sepsis Canada. I've been with the team for um, just over a year now. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for my introduction. Ryan, I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself. Um, so I'm a business development director with uh, MyTax, have been for just over three and a half years. Um, basically, my role is, um, I have a, I've actually have a dual role. I am, uh, I'm considered something of a research contract uh, advisor for McMaster University, and I'm also uh, a BD with, with MyTax. So this means that uh, if projects land at McMaster, I also uh, negotiate IP agreements and things like that. But in general, I can create uh, my tax collaborations uh, at McMaster or literally anywhere else in Canada. Um, so basically I do this by uh, just connecting with my, my colleague at the institution that is creating the collaboration or institutions. And, uh, and then we, we can go from there. All right. And then um, Stephanie and Dr. Nelly, do you guys want to introduce yourselves, kind of let us know where you're joining from, both um, like the institution and then the location across Canada, and then maybe tell us a little bit about what it is that you were wanting to um, find out or learn about during today's webinar. Maybe we'll start with Stephanie. Sure. Um, can you hear me okay? I'm not using my usual setup. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Um, I am Stephanie. I'm the grants facilitator for Action on Sepsis, which is the, um, it's a sepsis-based research cluster at the University of British Columbia. So it's, it's clinicians, researchers based at UBC and also at the Children's Hospital, um, as well as a few other hospitals in, in Vancouver. Um, so as my role as a grants facilitator, I didn't have any specific questions. I just um, wanted to learn as much about the, the, the funding and the opportunity program as possible in case it was relevant to me and my cluster's members. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, and then uh, Dr. Nelly. Yeah, hi. Um, my name is Nali. I am a, an assistant professor in biostatistics in the Department of Community Health Sciences at University of Calgary. And uh, I actually just finished my postdoc at McMaster, and I still have my adjunct uh, positions uh, with two departments at McMaster. And uh, I am a, a committee member in Subsys Canada, so I'm going to receive funding from uh, the network. And um, so my question is mainly to, um, to discover whether there are possible ways to leverage some funding from uh, Subsys and like uh, for the train year combined with uh, uh, my tax funding. Yeah, okay, perfect. Thank you, Dr. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, so I guess that gives us a good sense of um, topics like relevant topics to cover. Um, I can elaborate a little bit more on um, the project funding that Dr. Nelly is receiving through Sepsis Canada. Um, but before I get to that, I do want to make sure we do um, a land acknowledgement. So uh, I want to, uh, I would like to acknowledge the Indigenous peoples of the land that we are on today. Um, while we meet on a virtual platform, I would like us to take a moment to acknowledge the importance of the lands which we each call home 
We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and improving our own understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their cultures. From coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of the Inuit, Métis, and First Nations people that call this land home. Um, and then I'd also uh, just like to take a chance to uh, thank the Canadian Institutes of Health Research for funding Sepsis Canada. Obviously, without them, we wouldn't be able to uh, provide these top up uh, trainee award. So uh, with that, um, I think Ryan, um, Ryan had a presentation uh, to give to the group. Um, and I guess before you jump into that presentation, Ryan, um, just to elaborate a little bit more on Dr. Nali's question. So essentially, um, Dr. Nali, she's one of the investigators uh, that's working on a project that Sepsis Canada has funded. Um, so basically, there's nine projects that Sepsis Canada provided funding to. And um, the project that Dr. Nali is working on is being run by um, another investigator and four different uh, institutions are receiving funding. And I think her question was around if there is a way that she can use some of that Sepsis Canada funding that's been um, awarded to her or a rate given to her institution, is there a way that she could leverage that uh, within a, a MyTax award? Is that a, a good summary, um, Dr. Lee, about what your question was? Yes, thank you. And please uh, feel free to call me now. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so anyway, just to give you some context, Brian will be the, the best person um, to kind of elaborate and answer around that. So with that, Ryan, I'll let you um, jump into your presentation. For sure. Um, one question for, for Stephanie, though. Um, are you familiar with MyTax? Yeah, we haven't. I haven't um, helped anyone with um, the program itself, but actually the person okay. I work with has. And it's in our case, okay. we just have trouble finding partners often, actually. Okay, because um, I'm just wondering if I should give my my text presentation, given that I do know that Na is uh, familiar <laughs> thoroughly with the program. Uh, would you like to see my full spiel, or I think or my interest is more where Sepsis Canada could fit in, or where Sepsis could fit in. Honestly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I I do. I am fairly familiar with the program. Yeah, so let's skip that one then, because uh, yeah, Na knows it too. Um, what can I do? I, I What I'll do is I actually will show my presentation, but I'm just gonna like blast through it because there are some changes that have happened the past few months. So um, back in the, well, not actually was familiar with some of these changes, but I'm just gonna like put it up there because because uh, why not? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, got to uh, use this Zoom thing, uh, share screen. Uh, here we go. Can you see my presentation? Yeah. Okay. Slideshow. Okay. Literally going to blast through this. Um, so you already know what my text is. Basically, they help build collaborations and they fund those collaborations because they are uh, essentially a funding agency. Um, we can skip that. Uh, you know, we basically work with everyone. Uh, you know, we're like, there's one of me in every university and college across Canada. Um, we work with literally thousands of companies, not-for-profits. Uh, and now uh, more recently, we have opened things up to municipalities and theoretically hospitals under certain circumstances. Um, we are completely sector agnostic, uh, discipline agnostic. And yeah, we can work with a lot of different organizations. Um, these uh, the, the collaborations that they build can actually be, uh, especially through ex, uh, Accelerate, can be extremely flexible. Um, so we can, um, you can create a simple collaboration in the sense that you could uh, work with you know one organization and hire, let's say, a graduate student or undergraduate or postdoc for some duration of time, let's say uh, four months to several years. Um, but you can also create quite elaborate um, collaborations as well. So for instance, uh, just a few uh, days ago, I submitted a project with a company that is working with like three institutions, 100 graduate students over five years, many of whom are TBD because uh, they know who's gonna start in year one, but not who might start in year three. Um, so this can become very uh, elaborate, but um, it's actually the same application, the same piece of paper, 
um, uh, regardless of the of the, the funding amount. It's just how much you write changes. Uh, so that you may need to put a little bit more background and methodology for um, for a larger collaboration, but otherwise it is the same process. Um, basically for MyTex Accelerate, they're looking for quality research. Um, these projects are adjudicated. Um, and then there, we, we do work internationally as well. And under certain circumstances, you can even work with international partners. And ultimately my Texas aim is, is to train graduate, uh, graduate students, uh, postdocs, uh, undergraduates, basically give people an industry experience outside of their normal academic uh, experience. Um, I'm gonna skip this. Yeah, typically you're looking at one-to-one -one match. Um, one of the changes that has happened is, is the, the opening up to municipalities and hospitals and uh, the amount of funding available uh, for um, students has somewhat changed uh, in terms of like the structure of our, our quote internship units. Um, we actually do have more flavors now, which makes things slightly more complicated for the applicant, but not if you consult with your MyTex BD or, or myself, because um, we can kind of, uh, if you tell us what you're trying to accomplish, we can help you strategize to show like how much money realistically could you get from MyTex. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, these projects are peer-reviewed, uh, non-competitive and quick. The average turnaround time for a MyTex project is six to eight weeks, uh, depending on the size of the project. Um, I think you already know this, but basically MyTex invoices the partner. Uh, once the project's been approved, uh, the university then dispenses the cash. So they hire, well, the graduate student is already, if it's a graduate student or a postdoc, they're an employee of the university. Um, the stipend goes out to the uh, the applicants, uh, and then they also take off uh, project related costs. So MyTex funding can be used to support both stipends and research costs uh, associated with the project, which particularly is useful in health sciences. Um, MyTex Accelerate International is an identical, it's, it's the same program, it's the same application. You just take a different box at the, at the top. Um, if before you go through the MyTex Accelerate International program, you definitely wanna sit down and have a conversation with your BD. Um, because there's one additional criteria to uh, the adjudication, which is economic benefit to Canada. So you wanna make sure that you have a really robust economic benefit to Canada going in, um, because A, um, that's gonna like, uh, there's, there's a parallel review that goes on. Uh, so you wanna make sure that uh, you've at least ticked some of the boxes, uh, cause we do have something of a rubric on, on our side um, that we can, we can consult. Um, because yeah, there, there are certain projects that it just, it's a non-starter um, and you don't want to, to waste your, your, your efforts. Um, you can basically go uh, to most of the countries that you realistically want to do research in. Um, there is a list on, on the website, however, uh, that list is constantly up, updated. Even so, I would also talk to your BD because um, sometimes uh, there's a bit more wiggle room around some countries than, than others. Um, you can always check our website. Uh, I do have a second presentation that describes how you can use the MyTex website to find partners. Um, this is just a summary slide. Um, so do you have any questions about the MyTex programs in themselves? Or if not, I'll, I'll let Nubia go into the, um, the additional sepsis uh, Canada funding that can be put on top of the MyTex Accelerate. Um, I did remind, remember, remind me of a question that I've talked to someone about my text about before, and I just can't remember. Um, and it's about eligibility. So we have a postdoc yeah. who she did her PhD. She completed it about three years ago, but then took two okay. years and did work for NGOs, really in a non research role, and then came back to research. Yeah. Um, is there any limitations on, yeah, any limitations on eligibility in terms of length since PhD and also previous? previous experience? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, so postdocs, uh, the, the cap uh, since graduation date is five years, okay. unless there are uh, circumstances being put in front of my tax. Um, let's say, you know, someone's six years out, but they went on parental leave or had a long-term illness or were recruited for like military, uh, you know, uh, um, then, then we can kind of put in an exception request. Uh, I do sometimes get requests for people who graduated 10 years ago. There's 
I there's no circumstance in which I can see those going through. But if it's if it's a if it's a gap, if they've worked in industry in the meantime, like that's not a problem at all. Um, but yeah, you, you want to keep things within that five year span. Okay, thanks. I think that might be it for the MyTax questions, Nubia. Okay, um, I just wanted to also uh, welcome Fatima. So Fatima just joined um, and she is a graduate student at McMaster University. So I just wanted to give Fatima the opportunity to kind of say hello, introduce herself. And then Fatima, I'm just, we had done a little thing at the beginning where we had said, you know, if there was any uh, questions or topics that you were looking to have answered here, you're like, are you thinking of applying to this? Or are you just here for general knowledge? Kind of like give us a sense of, um, of uh, why you joined here today. Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, sorry for joining a bit late. Uh, I was just in another call, so it was just running. Um, I primarily joined because I would potentially be interested in applying down the line, but really just wanted to get some additional information in terms of um, the My Tax program and how that would work uh, with Sepsis Canada um, moving forward in my graduate study. So um, I likely wouldn't be applying in this calendar year, but um, potentially looking into it next year. So good information to have. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Fatima. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, basically, to to apply for this program, I mean, uh, any any party involved in the collaboration can be the initiator uh, of a collaboration. Um, basically, on your side, um, the easiest way to create a, a collaboration, I mean, the first step would be to have a conversation with your supervisor, make that sure that they are okay with you working on an industry funded project. Um, most likely, the answer is yes. Uh, even graduates that, that I've spoken to that say, I don't think so. It's like, no, I've spoken to your supervisor. Like they're, they're fully fine with it. Um, because most of the projects that graduate students work on are actually related to their own studies. Um, so they'll even work on a project with, with a, you know, um, a, an industry partner uh, that's related to their studies and may actually be a chapter within their thesis. So there's no need to like delay graduation uh, to accommodate. This may actually help with graduation. Um, but that would be the first step. And then after that, um, your supervisor may al already have uh, industry partners that they're discussing. And when I say industry, that could be companies, not-for-profits, municipalities, and under, under certain circumstances, hospitals as well. Um, but you know, uh, supervisors tend to have uh, people coming to them. They sometimes reach out. They also have colleagues that you know didn't go into academia and went into industry, so they, they have a wide net. Um, but in the, in the case that they don't have an industry partner, it's particularly one that uh, relates to your, your own research, uh, this is an opportunity for you to like sort of take your fate in your own, your own hands in a sense. Uh, think about who you'd like to work with. Uh, so if you have like a, a dream company or dream not for profit that you'd love to collaborate with, I mean, this is a great way to kind of get your foot in the door because uh, the government's footing half the bill, right? So under normal circumstances, you know, they would have to fund the, the research project or take you on as an employee, et cetera. But this is an opportunity to like, while you're still studying, uh, get yeah the government to pay uh, half of the, the research costs and the, um, the, the, the stipends. Uh, so, uh, and then once you, once you basically have established the, the relationship with the industry partner and you know that they're willing to put in cash that can be matched by my tax, um, then that's, that's the largest hurdle. From there, it's just, a, it's a simple um, research grant it's fairly prototypical. It's actually modeled after a, uh, an academic publication. So you'll be very familiar with it. Background methodologies, back um, abstract. Um, and the, it does look long, but actually most of it's just like contact details and declarations. Like, do you have human participants? Do you need ethics? Are you working with animals? That kind of thing. Um, do you have a conflict of interest? Uh, after that, it's just signatures and submission. I actually do help by reviewing all applications so it's, this isn't a situation where you kind of submit an application, cross your fingers, and then hear back at some point. Like, um, my, if you're at McMaster, then I would be reviewing your application, make sure all the T's are dashed, uh, I's dotted, uh, you know, do I think this is gonna get past peer review? And then once I'm confident it will, we submit, like I submit it, and then I, I watch it and make sure that it, it goes smoothly through the adjudication process. And then realistically, you hear back in six to eight weeks, um, there's above 96% acceptance rate. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, you can be fairly confident. Uh, as long as you have an eligible partner and project, um, 
it is highly likely it will be funded. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. I'll definitely be in touch with questions. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> I'll now jump into the Sepsis Canada, like top up funding for um, this My Techs Accelerate internship. So just to kind of give everybody a background before I go into my slides, essentially what we wanted to do was incentivize um, the Sepsis Canada, like research community to apply to these My Techs um, Accelerate internships. And as Ryan has spoken, it's like the largest hurdle is getting that partner organization, but if you're able to get that partner organization, you do get um, that much funding from my tax and then we wanted to just incentivize people a little bit more by also adding top up funding from sepsis Canada. Um, so that's the little bit of the background. Um, I'll share my screen and the slides that I have to go through basically are the program guidelines, um, but at the end you guys can ask me any questions that you have in terms of the um, top up funding. So can everyone see my screen with some slides? Okay, perfect. Yeah, so a little bit of a background on Sepsis Canada. Um, in terms of our vision as a network, uh, it suspects sepsis save lives, support recovery, which really does speak to um, Sepsis Canada wanting to impact research and care across the spectrum. Um, so all the way from prevention of sepsis um, and understanding the causes to better management and um, better rehabilitation and recovery for sepsis survivors. Um, here you can see some of our core values and then here you can see some of our focus areas. And I just wanted to highlight these focus areas because essentially the focus areas are the areas um, that we want people to submit projects in within um, this competition. So the focus areas are understanding the causes of sepsis, improving the prevention of sepsis, improving the detection and identification of sepsis, uh, better management, improve rehabilitation, and then educating the next generation. So let's see. Um, in terms, let's just make sure I didn't skip a slide. Yeah. So in terms of um, the objective in, of the proposal that we want people uh, to be submitting, it focuses around uh, those Sepsis Canada focus areas. Uh, I won't go through them again here, but I just kind of wanted to point out where it is that those um, areas come from. Uh, and then in terms of the research team, uh, we really did stick to uh, the MyTax Accelerate requirements. So <clears throat> a research team would consist of a student, uh, it can be an undergraduate student, a graduate student, or a postdoctoral fellow. Uh, they need to be at a MyTax partner university, and then also the student needs to be a Sepsis Canada member. Um, we also want to, the supervising uh, professor to have an academic appointment at a Canadian university and then again also be a Sepsis Canada member. And then um, in terms of the partner organization, this kind of um, goes to Naz's question um, in terms of how she could leverage the funding that Sepsis Canada has provided um, perhaps towards that partner organization. So maybe Ryan, at the end of uh, my presentation, we can address that question that Na brought up. But in terms of a partner organization, it's um, defined as for-profit corporations and eligible not-for-profit corporations. Um, and if you guys have questions around uh, what that what that entails, uh, Ryan would be the best person to answer that because again, we're just following um, the MyTax Accelerate eligibility here. Um, in terms of the funding that's available, so Sepsis Canada has reserved $40,000 for uh, these top up fundings and basically what that means is that um, we've decided to reserve $10,000 for each pillar of health research. So $10,000 um, will be reserved to fund two projects that focus on biomedical research. Um, two projects that focus on clinical research, two projects that focus on health services research, and then two projects that focus on population health research. Um, and then that way we really want to encourage, uh, again, research across those four pillars of health research rather than everybody um, that's doing clinical research getting all of the funding, for example. Um, and then, yeah, just some important dates to point out here. Uh, the, the Sepsis Canada application, which is quite small, um, it's due January 31st of next year. Uh, and we anticipate that we would let uh, applicants know whether they have 
been successful in securing that top-up funding by um, the middle of February next year. Um, we do have a requirement that obviously those people that uh, get the top-up funding actually complete a MyTax Accelerate internship. So within 12 weeks of receiving um, that notice that they have uh, been successful in receiving the top-up funding, we will need to see that they've also successfully put together a MyTax Accelerate uh, internship application. So something to just keep in mind is that the uh, application form for the Sepsis Canada top-up funding is quite brief. Um, um, essentially, we want to see that there's a student, an academic supervisor, and a partner organization that have been put in place, and then we want a brief description to ensure uh, that the research program that is being proposed actually matches those research objectives that I talked about, and then a description of how the $5,000 in top-up funding um, will be used. So with that, that was pretty much um, all that I had uh, for for um, like a PowerPoint on Sepsis Canada funding. Um, so I wanna open up the floor and let people ask questions and maybe Ryan, we can start with um, Naz's question in terms of can she leverage Sepsis Canada funding that she has received towards this project in any way? And I think my understanding was that um, it was not possible because it's CIHR funding, but uh, anyway, I'll let you uh, answer it. Yeah, I think what uh, what happened with uh, Naz's email is uh, basically it, it snowballed with uh, more and more BDs uh, being double checking various details, uh, and the 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 answer unfortunately is uh, the funds weren't eligible uh, in their current uh, current state. But um, yeah, there there might be something that we can. I mean, receiving CIHR funding does not uh, preclude the ability of a, of a partner to. Uh, participate, but um, yeah, you just need to find other funding. It becomes a bit philosophical once all the funds end up at a, at a hospital or organization, but um, yeah, we can't like just leverage government grants. Thank you. Hi, nice to see you again, Ryan. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you helped you, help me a lot with um, like uh, my postdoc uh, MedHex uh, application and also like uh, for my student application. Um, so I, I guess my question uh, for the partnership is that it, it does require like uh, the partner to contribute funding, right, in this situation. Yeah. And it's right. just the uh, Subsidies Canada going to top up like 5,000 for each project. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I see. Perfect. Um, Stephanie or Fatima, do you guys have any questions on the Sepsis Canada top-up funding or the application? Yeah, this might relate both to, and it's a, I think it's something we discussed about other Sepsis Canada things, and I've discussed with my tax. Um, a lot of our projects are global health based, and I'm just wondering if that would cause any issues with eligibility for the project with either the Sepsis Canada or the or the my tax. Um, Programs. Are your partners Canadian or are they international? Um, both. Like we work really closely with the BC Children's Hospital, and then obviously mm -hmm. the Global Health Project. So we do have international yeah. partners. But usually um, the partner would be the, the Children's Hospital. In BC. Do your students uh, travel abroad? Are you using the GRA, by the way? Sorry. Uh, do, you the use the MyTex, do you use the MyTex GRA? Uh, we do, we have. Um, okay. Good. So we've used that for some partnerships. And then we also, it's just, we also have some like up like the postdoc or a couple of students based at UBC that okay. this would be for. Yeah, I just want to make sure that uh, you're aware of the travel grants for sending students abroad because uh, like the, the Global Health at McMaster, for instance, likes to use it to send students uh, typically to, you know, Europe or, or India. Um, yeah, because because yeah, uh, for Fatima, you may also be interested in knowing. Uh, MyTex does have a six thousand dollar travel grant to send uh, students abroad for uh, twelve to twenty four weeks to to work on uh, a research collaboration with uh, a university. Um, so you know, no funding required from a partner for for those collaborations, uh, uh, except for under certain circumstances. Um, in terms of the the working with global health, that shouldn't be an issue. And um, 
like what you'd want to do is if, i mean if they're a multinational but they do a footprint in canada they're just a canadian uh organization like if you know uh let me think like habitat for humanity is obviously an international uh not for profit uh we can't work with international profits that are just international but uh we could work with like the the local chapters and they are locally incorporated so that's that's just a domestic project um in in the event that uh, is a company and they are abroad uh we do have a, an eligible list of countries that we can operate in and that's available on the website just on the the mind accelerate international um page um but you do need to have that economic benefit to Canada. And this is the only circumstance in which um, the nationality of a student might uh, play a, a role. Um, so you wanna make sure that, you know, you have Canadian students or permanent residents. You wanna make sure, uh, this is again, MyText takes no stake in IP. But this is where IP could come up because um, for international projects, basically we wanna see that there's a, usually at least joint ownership. Um, you can build a case though, uh, like if, if the technology or the, the research being uh, gathered is a huge benefit for, for the Canadian taxpayer, then, then that could be an argument as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's more of a nuanced conversation that you want to have with, the, with your BDs. Okay, and the economic benefit part, um, what I sort of remember is that if regardless of the international partner organization or um, with just, or just for profits, right? Or just for so for in my tax seller international it's only for um for-profit companies for okay. domestic projects then you have you run the full gambit right you've got uh, companies not-for-profits uh municipalities and and under certain circumstances hospitals okay thanks right any other questions I'm sorry, I have another question about the uh, eligibility of, of hospitals. Like uh, yeah. you said, there are some like um, conditions, right? Yes. So um, the, the conditions uh, are that um, you need to have a project that is Okay, so basically you look at like what MyTex's mandate is, it really makes a lot more sense. So basically what MyTex is trying to do with all these collaborations is trying to give um, HQP, uh, you know, highly qualified personnel, uh, opportunities are outside of the normal academic experience. So what you don't want to fund would be projects that uh, would be performed anyway. So you basically have like, you know, medical related students that were already at the hospital working with the hospital to do stuff that they'd already be doing, but now they're getting a top up for my tax. So that wouldn't be eligible. However, something like your project with uh, CBS is a good example of a project that would be eligible because it's outside of the normal operations of that organization. Uh, so it gave you a novel experience but it also benefited the funding party because that's the other thing. So this is where uh, working with um, foundations, for instance, can be tricky because they'll fund um, pro research projects that have nothing to do with their, like, their own benefit. Um, so that is something you have to keep in mind. But for instance, like, yeah, your, your project would, uh, would have been eligible if it were, had been with the hospital. At the time, obviously hospitals weren't eligible, but. Uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Ask Ryan, could you elaborate for Stephanie and Fatima a little bit more about NAS project and what made like just a little bit more so that they could understand that? Um, maybe now would actually be in the best uh, <laughs> place to, to describe her project. Yeah, sure. Um, I I think I had uh, two um, like my tax applications. One is for myself uh, for a postdoc um, like uh, funding. Um, the industrial partner is CBS, uh, and the project is on uh, developing mathematical, math, mathematical models uh, for improving blood supply chain um, as with Services Canada as a, uh, sorry with uh, Canadian Blood Services as an industrial partner, and uh, I was 
more like a, an intern at CBS, and uh, we were like working on um, like uh, operations research methods and uh, mathematical models to forecast demand of black product, and then using uh, mathematical models to op optimize cost. So yeah, so that one does involve some uh, like uh, statistical modeling uh, and uh, machine learning algorithms. Uh, so it's not purely uh, a house care project. Exactly, which is why like that would be a good project uh, because yeah, if you're using, if you find yourself using mathematical models, computer science, that kind of thing, if I see that it's an engineering project that happens to be at a hospital, engineers generally are not at the hospital. So I can see that this is like, without looking even that much further into it, I'm pretty confident it's going to be eligible. However, if I see like a medical student's doing like, research that you know what i mean like this isn't outside of their normal scope that that's where they were anyway um then then it's it wouldn't be eligible but yeah nas project is a, is a perfect example thank you yeah like uh um so most of my projects are like that <laughs> and uh, yeah. i am thinking about uh, more like interdisciplinary project and uh, working with hospitals but um and my question is like uh, mostly hospitals are knowledge users and uh, like uh, in this case do we require them to contribute uh, funding and yeah. how medtech is going to leverage the funding um, just as we would with any other uh, partner. So when I've worked with hospitals in the past, they actually usually, like for instance, St. Joe's, um, there's actually three divisions and two of them were always eligible and the third one wasn't, but now is under these circumstances. Um, the hospital does have its own funding that could be eligible for supporting research. Um, so I'm gonna use St. Joe's as an example. So St. Joe's has a foundation that's eligible because it's a not-for-profit foundation. You do need to like demonstrate how the, the research itself would benefit the funding party, which can be a challenge with foundations, but not insurmountable. Uh, again, have a conversation with ABD to kind of get a sense of whether they think it's gonna go through. The second branch of St. Joe's, which again was already eligible, was St. Joe's Research Institute. So there's often a research institute tied to hospitals and they also can fund. Uh, an example of this is actually like Homewood Research Institute. Um, they fund a lot of projects and they're kind of a hospital, but it's the institute part that's funding them. Um, and then there's the hospital itself, which was formerly not eligible, but now is. And they do, again, if you get talking to the right person, they also have funding theoretically for research. Um, and then, yeah, it'd just be the same as, as usual. Uh, MyTex invoices them, they pay their invoice, MyTex doubles the funding, and then the funding is put at the university uh, in the supervisor's name dispensed out to the graduate student or postdocs or undergraduates as per the budget. I see, okay, thank you. Yeah, I think I have a better idea now. And um, I, yeah, because this is kind of new, it is like, um, I'm not exactly sure um, how to communicate this uh, with a hospital partner to explain. Yeah, <laughs> well, this is the thing. So what I would recommend is, um, which university are you affiliated with now again? Uh, university of Calgary. And uh, I, I know yeah. like uh, uh, Have you AHS. spoken to Angelo? Uh, Angelo? Uh, yes, I think I have met Okay, him. Angelo is like the, the Mindex B and BD in, in, uh, in Calgary. Um, I think it's him. There's one other candidate it could be. But um, yeah, I would just connect with them and have them explain it because yeah, it's, oh, okay. it's, it's not something where like, I mean, I haven't really even been advertising the hospital projects because it is nuanced. It's not something where I can just be like email blast, hospital is eligible, it, I have to have a conversation. <laughs> so I'm just like, I just, whenever anyone asks, I'll, I'll go into it. But, but yeah, as you say, it's uh, just, just get through my text BD to, to pitch it to the hospital. Yeah, that, that just, that's the easiest way. Okay, thank you. Right. Um, any further questions? If there's no other questions, I'll just give a couple tips on, on reaching out to partners that in the ways that like sort of my text can, can help a little bit. Um, let me just think what's the best way to do this. I'm just gonna actually show you my uh, 
my Google, I'm just gonna Google something and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how to, okay. My text accelerate. I'll share my screen. Okay, sharing screen. It's the fun part, okay. Let me know when you can see it. Cool, thanks Fatima. Um, basically, like if you're reaching out to, to companies, uh, the best way to actually find these companies is like uh, good old Google uh, is a great resource. Uh, you can also find it through through networks like Sepsis Canada, um, but there's all sorts of consortia and, and industry groups. Uh, whenever you look at um, industry specific events, so sepsis related seminars, conferences, that sort of thing, you can sometimes get speaker lists and see which companies or enough profits have attended those. Um, and those are a good place to start as well, because you can kind of see that they are interested in partnering because that's why they're usually at these events. Um, the other thing is to contact uh, either your supervisor or uh, fellow supervisors because uh, they may have dormant or past collaborations that can be really useful. Uh, your network is much larger than generally you think, unless you have LinkedIn, then it's as, exactly as large as you think. Um, but uh, in terms of the, the MyTax um, website, you can actually find some of uh, some collaborations through, through the website. Um, so I literally just typed in MyTax Accelerate to, to get to this page. Uh, don't just type in mytax.ca. I don't know why, but it doesn't link that well to all the other pages. Um, so I Googled MyTax Accelerate to get here. Um, we spent so much money on this website. Uh, so, okay. So the one place you can look is projects, okay? This is uh, actually past projects that we have funded. Um, at, the at the moment, there's, there's about 14,000 shown. Uh, so what you could do is you could go to more keywords. I'm just going to type in sepsis and see if anything comes up. Sepsis. And would you look at that? Well, there's there's some. There's not a lot, but there there are some. Uh, you could probably use other uh, keywords. I don't know if you were like into kidney research, then you know nephron. Oh, nothing came up. Uh, but the point is, I'm just going to put in blood. And look at that, there's, there's many pages of them. Uh, basically what this lets you do is look at um, just past projects. And the, the, the benefit of this is you can like click on them. You can see who like the, the, the partner was. Uh, so that's not really, this isn't a great example, but let's have a look at this one. Yeah, so you find what uh, partners MyTex has worked with in the past. And the benefit of this is like, you know that A, the partner knows who MyTex is. So you don't need to worry about that. It's funny and see. Uh, B, you know that they uh, are a company that has a budget in R&D. And three, you know that they do have some experience working with um, academic partners. So you get to like skip a lot of the parts. And it also means that uh, whoever set up this collaboration may still have a, a contact there. Um, but this is like a good way of like creating, um, you know, I'm just gonna type in sepsis again and see if there were any good projects. Yeah, so, you know, you just like, okay, that this is also not a good example. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you could, you could like contact these partners and uh, you create a collaboration with them uh, for the reasons I mentioned. Um, so this is, that's, one, that's one way, looking at past projects. Um, the other way is, again, you go to the MyTax Accelerate page. It's not super intuitive, but, uh, and then you go to open projects. This is not a super efficient way, but uh, you can actually just go through these projects and look for anything that might be interesting. This isn't great for like just looking for sepsis related projects, uh, but in general, this is a good way of finding projects because these are basically situations where companies or not profits have come to MyTax, said we have money, we have a research question, but we don't have a, uh, an academic partner. And this is where you can kind of find these projects. Uh, basically, the only people I am aware of that are looking at these pages are me and my colleagues, and then we try and recruit uh, experts from our respective universities, but it's a publicly accessible tool, and you can, you know, go through here and see, you know, are you interested in a project that looks like this? Um, and then this goes into like a lot of detail, it goes through like the, the company, 
uh, description of the project, what they're looking for. And then you simply reach out to your local BD and they can help you set up a, an interview with that company. And sometimes um, if you even see a related project, it may be worth, like if you know that there's a company working on something related to what you're studying, this is an opportunity to sort of be like, hey, this project doesn't look a great fit for me, but uh, we could provide uh, value to you in a different way. Um, so this is just a good way of finding, finding companies. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be the long and short of it. Sorry, could I ask a question? Absolutely. <laughs> Just uh, uh, regarding to those industrial partners, um, like, uh, should we be careful with some like uh, copyright or like uh, some uh, PI, uh, IP like uh, part about the project? Yeah. So when you're setting up a collaboration, uh, it is recommended that if you think I if you think there's any chance IP could be uh, created, you're gonna to wanna to speak to your uh, Office of Research Services uh, to make sure you have a research agreement in place. So for instance, at McMaster, I have the dual role. I have the, I'm also a research contracts ad, uh, advisor. So I can also uh, negotiate IP. Depending on who you're working with at MyTech, they may not have uh, a dual role like that, but they will know who their counterpart is that can help you set up uh, research collaborations. If you're working with a company, most likely they'll bring it up anyway, uh, but they don't always. And it is good to like have a good understanding of um, who would own the resultant IP. Um, and also a lot of like the, the boilerplate uh, research agreements have NDAs baked in, and you may want to have those to have a more open conversation while you're setting up the collaboration. Right. Okay, I see. So those will be discussed uh, at the beginning of the project, right? Be I would advise it. However, my, the, who, depending on who you're working at with MyTax, they might not bring it up because MyTax takes no stake in IP. Like they don't right. care who, who gets it. Um, so it's not necessarily in the wheelhouse of every MyTax BD. It just happens to be mine and, and a few others. Um, but if you're concerned about IP, figure out who your IP person is at your university and loop them into the conversation early. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And uh, I'm sorry, I have another question. <laughs> sorry, so many questions. Um, oh, they're good. So uh, for the Sepsis Canada, uh, I saw like uh, there are some uh, collaboration with Canadian Blood Services. Um, like, uh, could, could you uh, explain uh, who are the collaborators at uh, Canadian Blood Services and uh, whether it's possible for like, uh, so, for example, I'm in the identifying services committee. Whether I can approach them to um, generate some other project collaborations? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So, um, in terms of the latest collaboration that we had with them, it was to raise awareness about sepsis, and that was just through their communications committee that we did that. Um, and then we do actually have a connection with um, one of the executive directors there. Um, within Canadian Blood Services. He's kind of helped us set up our research network because he previously worked for a research network um, that's very similar to Sepsis Canada in terms of the way that uh, we're structured. So yeah, um, and, uh, it's one of those things where we could definitely reach out. Uh, his name's David, so I could definitely reach out to David uh, and see if there's like an opportunity for partnership there because we do have um, kind of like a, a at least a door <laughs> to start having those type of conversations. So yeah, if you can um, give me more information on what it is that you're thinking in terms of a project, I can then um, at least make that initial introduction. Okay, and so in, in terms of this collaboration, so for, uh, if I'm considering uh, some part of project within the committee that I'm currently in uh, uh, with Subsys Canada. So should I talk to uh, the committee chair first and then like uh, try to expand the uh, connection with CBS? Like talk to Alan? Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely loop Alan in. Um, I know that he's been trying to form a MyTex partnership for the, like he's got two projects within Sepsis Canada. I know he's been trying to form my tax partnerships as well. So I do think a, like a, 
that initial communication with Alan would be good. Um, that way he can kind of tell you any advice in terms of like what he's figured out or maybe give you some advice in terms of um, potential partnerships that he's kind of thought about in relation to these projects. Um, but yeah, I would definitely uh, let Alan know and then I can uh, make that introduction with uh, Canadian Blood Services and we can see if, if that would be a potential partnership, yeah. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you so much. I have no more questions. <laughs> No, thank you. Now you've been bringing up some uh, good questions. I've been learning about um, the intricacies of my text accelerate because of your questions. So they're all good questions. <laughs> um, Stephanie or Fatima, do you guys have any questions? I don't have any questions right now. I just wanted to say thank you. This was actually super useful in terms of the my tax application and how sepsis Canada is involved. Um, I'll probably be reaching out to both of you um, with follow up questions once I'm closer to, um, I guess, the better idea of what the application will look like on my end. Yeah, great. Thanks, Fatima. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I don't have anything further. It's good to know. I didn't know about the research institutes actually partner for the hospital. No. Good to keep in mind. Absolutely. That's interesting. My yeah, it's, you know, even if you know the rules, it's always good to like just consult with your BD because there's always like weird intricacies or workarounds or yeah, sometimes you can work in the gray a little bit, but yeah, it, it, you know, the website's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. You really want to talk to your, your, your BD. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for attending, Stephanie, and hopefully um, it'll be used for, useful for any action on sepsis members that... Um, might be applying. So yeah, I think with that, um, we'll end it early. Everybody can get 30 minutes of their day back, which is always um, nice, especially right before the long weekend. Um, Ryan, do you have any kind of like final words that you wanted to say to the group? Um, just thank you all for, for joining. If you ever do have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, Nat, I love your questions and I would love questions from, from the rest of you. Um, yeah, th that really is what we're here for. So uh, yeah, let me know if there's anything I can do to support and uh, I'm definitely here to, to help. Yeah, and then um, I wanna thank everybody that um, did attend here today for attending. Um, I think it, since it is the first time that we're putting this out to our community, it m might be a really opportune time to apply given that um, a lot of people will still be learning about like the intricacies of it. So the chances of getting uh, that Sepsis Canada top up funding will likely be a bit better, um, just given that we might have a few like less applications than um, in future years when we do this. So definitely I would encourage if you're thinking about applying um, or like in Stephanie's case, if there's action on sepsis members that are thinking about applying, definitely um, encourage them to reach out to us if they have questions. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll um, see a number of different uh, successful projects through this program. Um, with that, yeah, thank you guys for attending and have a great, I guess, afternoon. You guys are getting close to your afternoon out east. I'm just kicking off my morning here. And I guess, Stephanie, it's really early for you. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Thanks, awesome. everyone. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.